Yeah, it's another mailbag. Today I already unboxed it because I was recording but ran out of memory. So that's why this is already out of this box. But this is the Baku, or is that is that one or two Ks? I can never tell. But it's the BK938. It's a professional tool for telecommunication. It's commonly used as a SMD rework for the extremely small pitch parts on cell phone boards. But this is advertised as being small but very powerful. Two L's, okay. THT, no idea what that means. Soldering adapter head included. That's, I'm betting the tip. Uh, small but very full and fast. Fast heating, long life heater, yin yang. Arrows, recycle, don't throw away, f no fire, no babies. Real materials, international with a really weird space. Technology, brand Hong Kong, made in China. I ordered the 110 to 120 volt in silver. Alright, let's get this thing open. Immediately upon opening it, you see thermoform plastic, the power module, and your iron. Mm, that's all that's in there. There's no additional tips that are like that are pictured on here. I don't know if it's a fluke. I'll contact the seller find out. All right. Well, here you've got your tip, which appears to be similar to all the others, except it's a very crucial difference. This is a split down the side, and a spring to hold it all together. So if you pull it off, come on. There it goes. Oops. So, put this spring back on so I don't lose it. Alright. This is the tip. It's basically just your standard tip with the split down the side and a spring to hold it on. Your actual iron itself has the ceramic core inside of a small metal tube, which is fed by 12 volts from the standard RCA jack, which matches to this. Alright. So let's button this back up, clip you back together. Now we're going to take a look at this. This is your power unit. You've got power switch, power LED, temperature knob, it's analog, and you power out in addition to an iron holder and some nicely milled vent holes. Well, as Dave Jones says, don't turn it on, take it apart. So we're going to do that exactly. All right. Turn this a couple turns, just enough to clear those little knocks. It's very nicely made. But let's see the insides. These things are usually nightmares of electric electrical safety. Damn, it's late. All right, a little bit more. Here. Pop that open, and you're greeted with the transformer. Really big, solid transformer. So this is going to be turning your uh, high voltage mains into 12 volts, which is then fed to here. You've got a simple circuit board that I'm guessing contains your PWM switching circuitry for temperature regulation. You've got a large potentiometer over there, really smooth, not gritty at all. Uh, looks like a calibration trimmer pot, I'm not 100% sure, but you got a switch and they got a resistor going to the switch. Ooh, it's really cool, actually. Well, that's all that is. Let's button her back up and give it a test whirl. Put everything back. Turn this in. When I first opened this, and took it out of the box and tested it when I was thought I was still recording because this is take two. I ran out of memory midway through and my phone decided, oh, I'm not going to tell you. So I was running blind. That's not fun to do. All right. So we have that. Let's undo the zip ties. So yeah, when I uh, last time I plugged it in and waited for it to heat up, it stayed stone cold. Because it turns out that there was a broken lead wire going in there. So let's have a look at this. In 
see how many volts is output. See if my 12 volt theory is correct. Power. Let's put it at 10. Actually, you know what? Give me a sec. Alright, I'm back. I just hack jobbed up a quick adapter so we can actually measure the voltages without the futziness. Alrighty, let's get you hooked up to ground. Make sure shroud engages so we don't accidentally short something. Because toasting this straight out of the box would not be fun. Okay, connect you there. Now connect you to the probe, and you to here. Alright, let's power up, and see what our voltages are. Well, that's strange. Wait. Wait. I think I figured it out. Haha! -ha! There we go. So it's an AC modulation. We don't have any rectifiers in there. That's what's up. So you can see it steps it down. From zero is off. Slow ramp up. Maximum is 14.5 volts. And... Twelve volts is just at the ten. We can go past that. All right, that's actually really interesting. Huh. So that's how that works. So it's not DC modulated. I'm not sure if that makes the tip live, but this is not advertised as ESD safe. So I would not use this for extremely precise soldering. Ah, well. Let's get this thing actually running on doing some heat testing. See how long it takes to heat up. Alright. And then we'll do some soldering tests. Get the iron. Actually, let's see if my hot goes cooled down yet. No, it's still toasty. Well, we'll do a di uh, heat up race. See which one heats up faster, this one or my Hako. I bet you it's going to be the Hako. This thing's actually quite comfortable to hold. With that really fine pitch tip, this thing's going to be gold for doing rework. Hmm. I actually might bring a couple of these to the Nova Labs makerspace when I do my SMD t class there. Alright, let's ramp you there. Still warm. Yep, you're still warm. Alright, let's get you heating. Hold the... Okay, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two. 3 We're already one minute in. It's not very fast then. Oh, if you want. A little bit over a minute. See a wisp of smoke. There we go. And we have a melt point. Ooh, that works real nice. Well, that's amazing. Shake that off a little bit. Get this dip of 8 IC I need to clean the leg off of. Melt this away. Mm. 
doesn't have a very pleasant hot metal smell. Actually, it's probably just the metal heating up for the first time. I bet you that's it. I don't think it's supposed to be smoking that much. Uh, I should probably go get some safety McLarses. Uh oh. Let's try this again. Gonna make those wisps of smoke. Yeah, she's wisping again. Um, where's my pliers? See if I can nudge you up just a smidge so I don't have that ceramic indirect contact. Try that again. See if it's the ceramic that's smoking, or if it's the direct contact with ceramic. Or is it supposed to have direct contact so we get better thermal conduction? Oh, she's still smoking. Well, that doesn't look good. That does not look good at all. I think this one's busted. Hmm. Smells like burn. That's not a good sign. Yeah, I'm gonna have to contact the seller. This does not look good. Shoot. It's hot. Right. Alright, that's not looking good. Not looking good at all. I'm still a smidge too warm to pick up with my end. So, I'm gonna put you back on the end. Alright, you're nested back on there. All right, well, that's that, if you can call it that. <sighs> Looks like I may have gotten a fluke, or it's just a very poorly designed unit. All right, that's it for today. I'll be back again with another video to see if that's a known issue with after I talk to the seller. But I'm hoping that's not a problem that's known because I was really looking forward to using this thing, actually. It's a very nicely designed piece of kit on the outside. Interior-wise, not so sure. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.